welcome to my channel if you haven't been here before or welcome back if you watch my videos and if you do I thank you so so much as always I upcycle clothes and linens and lace and blankets and just about anything into beautiful one-of-a-kind pieces of art that you can wear and I sold for many many years and now I just do, do tutorials and what we're making today is a white eclectic scarf with laces and linens and fringe and jewelry and things like that I sold scarves like crazy people just love them if you are a reseller and you like to sew to sell so at the end of this I will do some pic kind of a picture collage of some of my scarves that I have made and sold in the past they're not all going to be white they're not going to be the same materials but it'll give you a good idea of um, colors that look great or new materials to add that this video won't show so let's get started okay so the first thing I'm going to do is decide how long I want my scarf and so I just have this fat kind of yarn that lays around so I took that and just kind of draped it around my neck to get an idea of how long I want my scarf and I want mine pretty long and this is a hundred inches yours can be whatever you want it to be so it'll be a hundred inches yet there'll still be some fringes that hang below that by the time I'm all done and um, that'll make it even longer so that just gives you an idea of where a hundred and inches hits and by the way these jeans I do have a tutorial on I'll put the link to that in my description let's get going okay so the first thing I want to do is make the base of the scarf just something that I can sew everything to and I am going to use this vintage tablecloth you know sometimes you can look out and find these sort of things at a thrift store but if your heart is set on something in particular and you can't find it at a thrift store, I get a lot of stuff on eBay. You can really find some pre-owned stuff at pretty good deals. And so I want the base of my scarf to be five inches wide. It'll be 100 inches long and five inches wide. So I will just cut this into five inch strips until I have enough to make a hundred inches long and then I'll sew them together but I'll show you that but I want to tell you something else this basic concept if you want to make say a shawl and for the scarf you can use lace also you can your base can be lace or like if you want to make a shawl find some lace curtains or lace tablecloth at the thrift store instead of five inches wide go about 24 inches wide and kind of do the same concept and then you'll just have this beautiful like shawl you can wrap around the feminine dress or whatever or I've done this before too I hope I'm not talking too much but if you go thinner and I've done this and people love it I call it a versatile scarf or necklace or belt if you go thinner and do about an inch or two and kind of do the same concept adding just like pretty things along it you can wear it as a neck piece with like a feminine lace dress kind of knot it like right here or that same piece you can take and wrap and use as a headband or as a belt and those are really fun to do so this is just a basic artsy sort of concept there's no right or wrong no rules I'm just going to show you my thought process basically Okay, so I have all my pieces cut to make a hundred inch scarf. Now I'm just going to my machine and with white thread, I'm just going to sew these together and I'm going to sew wrong sides together. On this one, it really doesn't matter, but if yours, if it matters, if there's a wrong and a right side, I like to sew wrong sides together. And then the seam, will be on the part where we add all the pretty stuff. That way the back will be nice and finished. So I'm just gonna sew these together until I have 100 inches. 
and I'll just use a small straight stitch. Okay, so now I have this all pieced together. And I just threw it over my mannequin so you can kind of see what I'm going to do next. So in my, I have a whole basket full of just lace scraps and linen scraps from when I do other projects and I just save them all. So I have this lace scrap and it's from a tablecloth that I cut up for another project, probably a dress or something. But I have kind of a long piece. I actually have a couple long pieces left. So what I'm going to do is take that and I am going to sew on the side where the seams are. And I am going to sew this right down the center. And it's not exact. I will just eyeball it when I'm at my machine. But I won't put this whole thing in the center. I will pick an edge and I will sew this edge down the center. And when you do that, you have this kind of floppy movement because the whole thing isn't stitched to it. I don't want it to be a solid stiff. I want it to be, you know, just kind of layery and have good movement. So I'll just pick an edge of this, sew it right down the center. And then when I run out, I'll go to my other piece and I'll just kind of pick up where I left off and keep doing that all the way down. I'm not going to take you to the machine with me every single time because there's gonna be so much we're adding to this. I think you could probably get the idea um, and I'll just use a fairly small straight stitch when I sew that on. Okay, so I got that sewn on and I had a little fun with it. I, like right here, I had two pieces and I knew this one was going to end, but I didn't want it to be completely sewn solid. So I stopped sewing about seven inches before the end and that just gives it more movement and just something floppy there. And then I started the next one sort of below that. But then I also ran out of this wider piece and all I had were these two little, the same lace crochet, but all I had was this skinny piece left and I had that much to go on the bottom. I just sewed it right at the top and I'll just let that hang also. You know, just have fun with it. This could be really creative and fun and sometimes you run out of something and it's like, oh gosh, I need to add something else. And so you find some fringe or fur and continue. And that's what makes it cool that it's not perfectly symmetric. Okay, so the next thing I think I will do is take a piece of lace. I think this was from a curtain or something. I just have a chunk. And I will cut it into two inch strips and I'll cut quite a few of them. And I want to make some ruffles. I want to, no, I'm gonna put you back down, sorry. Okay. I will do some ruffles from like here to maybe here, and then from here down. But I'm gonna get these cut into two inch strips and then I'll show you more precisely what I do. Okay, first I'll show you where I will place the ruffles and then I'll zoom in so that you can see kind of how I make them. And so I'm going to go from, I'm going to sew the ruffle on what is the inside of the scarf, but when it's all done, you can wear it however you want. But as it's sitting here, it would be the inside. And I'll overlap this scarf about half an inch. And I'm going from here to here, which is 22 inches. And then I'm going from here to the bottom, which is 24 inches. And this one will also be sewn towards the inside of the scarf, basically, or the outside of the scarf, but the inside layer, I guess, or the inside edge here. But I'll do a close up and show you how I sew that ruffle. Okay. I'll start at this pin down here, but I'm going to show you a little further up because it's easier to see. So I'll just stick it in my machine, you know, do the stitch and the back stitch, and I will stitch along in about every couple inches, 
I'll overlap it about an inch and just keep sewing. Another couple inches, overlap that about an inch and just keep doing that until I'm finished. And I'll probably just do a fairly small straight stitch with this one too. Okay, I got the lace all sewn, or the ruffles all sewn on. And, you know, just if you come to the end where you wanna stop sewing and you have some left over like I did, I don't cut that off perfectly. I let that hang because the more hanging fringy pieces you have, the better it looks. And But I'm going to cut it in half so that it looks a little more fringy. So, there's that piece. And I actually did the same at the bottom of this lace ruffle too. It, whoops. I um, had extra and I didn't cut it off right at the ruffle at the end of the scarf. I just let that hang and I cut it in half. Okay. So the next thing I want to do is go to, I have a basket full of fringes and different colors and things that I've gotten at flea markets, sometimes at um, thrift stores. If you look on like curtains and blankets and things like that, a lot of times you can find fringe or if you find a cape or something at a thrift store. Otherwise, if I'm really set on finding something, I'll go to eBay and you can, like I said, you can really find some good deals. Um, so what I want to do now is as I have it sitting here, I want to sew fringes along the entire outside, but I don't want it all to be the same fringe and I'll show you what I've got. Okay, and so I laid a few out here. I'm not done cutting. I have a whole bunch of fringe and I'll just kind of cut a few pieces how much I think I'll need but then I may need to go back to my stash and cut more but I didn't have a lot of this this is gold so I cut this up in four pieces and I'll just periodically periodically put that along that edge of the scarf and maybe I'll do something like this and then a really long piece of bullion and then a piece of white or I have this fun little crinkly fringe so I will just cut some up, put it on a chair or on a table next to my sewing machine. And as I sew along the edge of the scarf, I'll just add fringes here and there and just make sure I alternate all these. Okay, so I have the fringes all sewn down the side. Hug your ears, my mannequin squeaks. Oh, that one wasn't that bad. See? Okay, so basically I have gone along most of the raw edges here because this scarf started off with raw edges and I have filled almost all of them except for this inside piece to here and then this piece down to the bottom. And I'll show you what I'm going to do with those raw edges. Okay, so I have this piece of lace, which I cut for another project. It was like a tablecloth. And I am going to cut about four inch strips off of this. And I will sew them on the edge. Now, when things are vertical like this, I am just going to sew it straight. I won't do any pleating because I don't want it super ruffly. I want it more fringy, layery, boho looking. So I'm going to sew my four inch strips once I cut this just straight on the sides and I'm going to have the lace face outside of the scarf here so that it would actually be over to here. And then um, when it's vertical like this, it will drape nicely even though it's not pleated. So. I'm going to do that. Okay, I got those lace pieces sewn on and I had extra on this one and I just let them hang. Here and down here. 
Okay, so this is almost how I want it, except I always like a little bling on my items. And I found some jewelry pieces. This is just kind of a goldish necklace with some pearl looking beads on it. And I will just do some simple hand stitching and stitch these on once I figure out where I want them. Once I figure out where I want them, I'll stick a pin where I want them and then I'll take it off and lay it on my table and sew. But something like this, it's a double strand. I might put a stitch up here at this piece and then maybe a stitch over here and drape that. And then I have some pearls, different kind of pearl, vintage pearl necklaces. And I maybe will put a stitch here and maybe something there, maybe do something down below. And I also have a couple brooches that I may just pin on. I probably won't stitch those because there's different ways to wear this. If you want to wear it sort of over one shoulder, you can take one of those brooches or pins and pin it in place. So I'll just pin those and not sew them. So I'll come back and show you where I ended up stitching those at. Okay, so I ended up using two necklaces and one brooch and this long sort of gold one, I stitched here and let it swoop a little bit and stitched here. And then the pearl one, I stitched up here and just let it kind of hang. So when this is swooped over, it'll give us kind of a swag effect. And then I just put the brooch here for now. I think I'll move that once it's styled on and where it could be most visible. So I'm going to show it, I'm going to rearrange it on my mannequin and then I'm going to show it to you on a dress that I made. Okay, here it is the way I would wear it. I would hold it, swoop it around my neck and bring the long parts down front and that's what it would look like. So cute, right? Now I'm going to throw it over top of the dress that I made, which I actually had this dress in mind when I made this scarf, so I'll show that to you. Okay, how cute is that all put together? This purse I made a long time ago. I don't have a tutorial on that, but I could potentially do one if you would like to see one. Isn't this gorgeous? Thank you so much for watching.